Life is funny sometimes. One moment you're at the top of your game, just finished a major project on your boat, getting everything ready to spend a few quality days with your family during the holidays, and because things are going so well, you decide to take out your other boat to kinda hit two birds with a single stone, but then the next moment your flight gets cancelled last minute, obliterating whatever Christmas plans you had. You then catch a nasty cold, which incapacitates you completely, and so now you find yourself with two boat projects on the hard stand, being unable to work on either one seriously, and because you keep pushing, despite the illness, on account of the deadline you have hanging over you, your cold slowly develops into a pneumonia and you end up in the actual hospital. So how is that as a Christmas story for you? Luckily I come prepared for such an event, as I always work ahead a few projects, so that now I can show you how I finished some very important elements on the big boat. Let's start by installing the hydraulic cylinder that's gonna allow us to steer the motors. A single cylinder should be enough to steer both my motors and I'm gonna install it on the port side motor. First I have to remove that locking bracket. I clean the inside of the steering tube and then install the hydraulic cylinder. Because I have no idea what I'm doing here, I'm installing the plate of the cylinder at the outermost hole of the steering bracket here, which will turn out to be a mistake later on, but let's not worry about that just yet, because now we have to drill some holes into the stern of the boat in order to get the engine cables through. Here with the first hole I'm making a big mess because my drill broke mid-hole and I didn't want to wait for a new drill to arrive, so I had to beat it out with the chisel and hammer. On the other side I made a hole with a brand new drill, so this was comparatively easy. And so now I can pass all the engine cables and hoses easily into and out of the boat. In order to get the hydraulic tubes up to the wheelhouse I have to drill a hole through the deck. I first marked the position from below with a very thin drill bit. I then drill two bigger holes right next to each other with the core drill. Now I can install the first hydraulic tube and pass it through the deck into the boat. I attach the tube to the ceiling wherever I can. and then pass it through the hole in the stern all the way to the hydraulic cylinder. Next we can install the steering wheel and the steering pump. I hook up the hydraulic tubes to the steering pump and install the steering wheel. Filling the hydraulic system with fluid is a bitch and a half, especially if you've never done this before and the overcomplicated user manual provided by the manufacturer did not really make things easier. In the end, I figured it out through trial and error, the most important principle being that the little plastic tube between the funnel and the pump should never run empty, otherwise you're sucking up air into the system, which you're gonna have to bleed out through the bleeding valves at the steering cylinder, very similar as you would do with the brakes on your car. As the system is slowly filling up with hydraulic fluid, the motor will start to move until eventually you can move it all the way back and forth. Alright then, so far so good. When looking at both engines from here, you can see that the angle of inclination of the port side engine, that's the one on the right side of the frame here, is a little less than the starboard engine. That's because of that mistake I mentioned in the beginning, where I used the outermost hole of that steering bracket. So after I detach everything, you can see that with the piston fully extended and the engine fully inclined, the holes of the piston's plate align with the innermost hole on the steering bracket. 
So now all I have to do is fix those holes so that I can fit a screw through on both of the brackets. Now before I mount the bracket back to the engine, I'm gonna add this little ball joint, which is needed to steer both engines simultaneously, and it's part of this stainless steel connecting rod. So next I will connect both engines with this connecting rod, and in this way synchronize their movement. Now let's see if it works. Well, it works perfectly. Next I'm gonna install two batteries, one for each motor, and then we can test if the power trim still works with this configuration. And indeed, it does work. With the power trim pistons fully extended, the connecting rod barely avoids the brackets of the transom, leaving a mere centimeter of headroom. But even if it fits very tightly, it does fit. Alright then, let's get the motors back down and move on to something else. We're gonna stay right here aft of the boat where it's time to install a service platform, allowing a person to stand between the two motors. I'm gonna make use of the existing bolts to attach it on both sides of the transoms. First I'm gonna draw a line that's on a level with the boat, knowing that the boat is offset by about one and a half degrees. I drilled a hole into an angle profile so that I can bolt it onto the structure as such. I'll do the same here on the other side And so now I got four strong points of attachment for the future platform. Next I'm gonna weld a 50 by 50 square tube on either side. With the two square tubes in place, I realize that I won't be able to remove the platform were I to simply weld together the two sides into a single piece so instead, I'm gonna weld these shorter beams only to one side, leaving the other side open to eventually be bolted to the other side. Now I'm gonna do a quick test to see if I can actually remove it. And yes, it works, so I can continue with this concept. I incline the motors all the way to one side to see how wide the platform can be. I then cut a few more square tubes. And with these I'm gonna build two wings for either side of the platform. Next I'm gonna mark the position for where to drill the holes for the bolts that are gonna hold the two sides of the platform together first into the frame of the platform then into a flat profile in this way creating a plate with a hole in it that I can weld onto the shorter trusses on the platform structure next another hole into the platform frame I use a steel tube to get a level surface at which to attach the two wings. And with that, the main layout for the platform is done 
From the top we can see that we nicely filled out the available space, leaving just enough room for the motors to turn left and right. Now I can weld in those plates with a hole in them, for lack of a better word. And as always, I only attach them with a few tack welds for the time being. Now with this next piece, you could think that I made a mistake when choosing the position as it's slightly offset compared to the position of the wings, but that's actually on purpose on account of the wooden boards that I'm gonna put on the platform later on. Next I'm gonna remove the port side half of the platform in order to drill some more holes into the frame. Now I can attach the remaining connection plates and shorter steel tubes in between the two sides of the platform. And with that, the structure of the platform is done. Now all that's left to do is to finish the welding and close some of the holes in the steel tubing. Now before I take it off, let's see if the structure actually holds a person. And indeed it does. And although you can see it bent a little under the weight of my body, it does feel quite solid, even though it's only tech welded together at this point. And so now I can remove the entire structure to finalize the welding. Now, despite the fact that I'm in the shelter of my little tent here, I thought that with this piece I would practice my stick welding a little. At first I got mixed results, some were good, some were bad. Oftentimes I didn't quite hit the right starting or end point of a given weld, but that's what this was all about. Practice makes you better, and so with practice I slowly managed to do better welds. My goal was to make mainly solid and robust welds. Sometimes I made a hole, but then managed to close it off again. Sometimes I came very close to a perfect weld, at least as far as I can judge. With the main structure done, now it's time to close off those openings in some of the tubes. For this I got some scrap metal from previous builds, which I prepared to be welded in. And once all the holes were sealed off, I went ahead and cleaned the entire structure with the angle grinder. Now the parts are ready to be painted. And with that I can mount them back in place. Apparently the parts have warped a little under the heat of the welding, so I have to use tension straps to get the holes aligned. And with that, you can feast your eyes on my rock-solid, custom-fit and completely removable maintenance platform, which may also serve as attachment for a rear bumper, but more on that in a future video. Next time, I'll also show you how I install this second-hand dual control box, among many other things. So until then, take good care of yourselves, thank you for watching, and see you soon.